Hello guys. This is what if Naruto, Rock Lee, and Shikamaru went back in time. This is part 3. Let's begin. Naruto was well aware of the contemplative looks he was getting, especially the ones from Kabuto and the disguised Orochimaru. It was hard not to ignore the incredibly creepy stare of the Hebe team. However, what Anko had asked was, in his books, severely out of line. No Kanoha shinobi should ask another shinobi about yet another shinobi's habits, especially not with enemy ninja present. Now yes, Naruto had revealed some details about his sensei and some of the others that he probably shouldn't have known, but it was done in the heat of the moment and not really completely thought about. He would have to run damage control later on. Besides him were Lee and Shikamaru, staying an adequate distance away so as not to arouse suspicion, even more than they actually had. Behind him were his teammates, yet Naruto was not going to call them that just yet. Exactly like last time, Sakura had thought he wasn't fit to continue, and exactly like last time, he had blown everyone's expectations to the wind. Naruto was not particularly bitter about his past, though he had every right to be, but if it was one thing he wanted to change, it would be that he didn't want to beat Kiba by farting in his face. That was a most disgraceful win from someone who came from the noble Uzumaki clan, cousin to the Senju clan, and the last Namikaze as well. Oh, and Sasuke getting bitten by Orochimaru. That was something that he didn't want to happen either. However, Naruto and his brothers in arms were got in a bit of a quandary. If they tried to change things too much, then the future, though changed that it would be, would be so different, that the trio would be in unfamiliar territory, in no man's land so to speak. They needed the upper hand if they were to come out of this war relatively unscathed and victorious. But if they didn't try to change too much, then things could turn out the way they had before. Although, the Nara clan's involvement in Naruto and Lee's lives, plus the closeness between them and Shikamaru had already changed things. Naruto's dynamics with his team had changed. Kakashi was paying closer attention, for better or worse, and the other two had alternated between respecting his sudden leap of perceived intelligence or belittling it. In that case, nothing much had changed between him and his team save for Kakashi. Naruto was shaken by his thoughts when Sakura grabbed his arm to stop him from walking into a fence, the very same flimsy fence that protected the outside world from the forest of death. His gut clenched at the thought of what might transpire just beyond the metal gates. One discreet glance back at his two comrades revealed that they had the same expression he had. All right then. Anko boomed, shooting a glower at Naruto who astutely ignored the woman. It was her fault for bringing up that subject anyway. Each of your teams will be given a release form that every member is to sign. Signing this form is the same as signing over your life. All talking ceased as Anko looked each genin over, appraising them, giving them a silent warning. Sakura looked particularly green at this moment as Naruto saw her inching closer to Sasuke. She was right to be worried. Anko continued, her voice lower and more menacing. Kanoha is not responsible for what happens inside of that forest. If someone dies, then they die. It's not our problem. Her tone had the desired effect. Some of the weaker genin let their emotions blatantly show upon their faces while the more experienced ones were trying hard not to gulp. From the rookie nine, Shikamaru noticed that Ino was shaking, as was Sakura. Hinata looked paler than usual. Only Ten Ten, the eldest and most experienced genin, had a look of utter concentration on her face. The Nara frowned. In the previous timeline, the three younger girls had blossomed while Naruto was gone. Sakura, without Naruto or Sasuke, pushed herself until she was a fine medic. Ino, not to be outdone by Sakura, trained with the new Inoshika Cho teams to develop and become stronger. And Hinata? Hinata followed Naruto's Nindo to never give up and immersed herself into the Hyuga clan techniques with Niji at her side, helping her every step of the way. But in this world, these girls would have to become women much quicker. They were 12 or 13 at the moment. War had officially been declared three years later, but the the foundations for the war were already laying. Nagato, Akatsuki, Madara, Abito, they were all alive in this time period. With a shake of his head at that last thought, Shikamaru turned his attention back to Anko who was giving each team either a heaven or earth scroll and explaining that the other teams must gather the opposite scroll to win. You have five days. 
Anko exclaimed once the last release form was in her hand. Some of her colleagues were distributing scrolls. Shikamaru noticed that he had received a heaven scroll, and by the looks of it, so had all the Kanoa teams. The Nara's eyes narrowed. The Chunin exams were an excuse for war, and it seemed as though the idea was to pit each nation against the other, and not have internal fighting. At least until the preliminary rounds of course. If you fail to retrieve the opposite scroll within this limit to reach the entrance for the second part, then you fail. Remember. You have to get the scrolls, her eyes landed on Gara, who was practically salivating at the mouth to Naruto who narrowed his own. By any means necessary. With that ominous statement, she clapped her hands, and the gates opened. Lee saw that many genin cowered at the sight of the seemingly never-ending forest. He resisted the urge to scoff. If these kids knew what the future was like, they would have taken the forest, no problem. Begin. For a moment, all of the genin just stood there, looking at each other. But within nanoseconds, they all moved from their respective stations and into the forest. All but three genin had no idea what was waiting for them in this place. And those three genin were just waiting for what was waiting for them. Naruto was restraining himself for strangling Sasuke. His thou shalt bow at my feet attitude was pissing him off. He hadn't spent more than a day at a stretch together with Sasuke, and that was because they had to do missions. And since they were stuck doing deranks, it was easy to ignore the Uchiha. However, now they were forced to work together, and the alpha male in Sasuke decided that he should be in charge, because obviously Naruto was so stupid. At the moment, he was angrily stomping behind his leader, not caring that he looked like an impetuous brat. He had been Hokage for Kami's sake. Never would he follow this Uchiha. Naruto paused slightly when he felt a warm feeling in his gut. Startled for a minute, he bit back a laugh as he realized that Kurama was agreeing with his feelings. Looks like tall, dark, and furry was slowly waking up. A frown was on his face and gone in the next moment. If his companion was indeed awakening, then Naruto would have to be careful. He wasn't sure if the fox's chakra would mingle in with his own, hell, he wasn't sure if he would be back on the same level as he was in his own timeline. Pay attention Naruto. Sakura snapped when the poor kid nearly bumped into a tree. His response was shooting her an uncharacteristic scowl before looking away. It wasn't as though Sakura wanted to deliberately pick on her teammate, but he didn't make it easy for her to like him. Granted, he had stopped asking her for dates every three minutes, and he seemed much more powerful, but there was something about his attitude toward Sasuke Kuen that didn't suit well with her. Said boy spared one glance at Naruto before smirking in a superior sort of manner and keep trudging on. Their team had an earth scroll, which meant that they had to retrieve a heaven scroll from an opposing team. It should be easy enough. They had five days to get the damn thing after all. If only he knew what had happened the first time that all three of them were in this very same forest, thinking the very same thing. Naruto, to his credit, was putting all the what-ifs that were going through his head away, and focusing on the present. He knew what Orochimaru was planning this time, and he wasn't about to let Sasuke get bitten. This time, he had Shikamaru and Lee by his side to back him up. If anything went wrong, he had them to rely on. Plus, Naruto could say with full confidence that he was much stronger and more intelligent than when he had done this the first time around. And honestly speaking, Naruto had been fucking stupid back in the day unless it was tactical thinking. Now, he had his mind screwed on straight and his feet firmly planted on the ground. However, time travel was like a ripple in the water. Each new ripple that they created could be the signal of a tsunami. Therefore, they had to tread very carefully. I don't think that we should get the scrolls from our own Kanoha ninjas. Naruto spoke suddenly, finally getting the other two's attention. Sasuke stopped in his tracks and turned to look at the shorter boy, Sakura doing the same. For once, they didn't have looks of derision on their faces. Looks of contemplation were there instead. What do you mean? Sakura asked, though she caught the gist of what Naruto was getting at. Inwardly, Naruto sighed, thanking whatever god existed that they hadn't had to debate this subject as well. Think about it. The Chunin exams aren't just about the individual shinobi, they are about the village as well. 
If we stick together with our own village, then there is a higher probability that the exams will be filled with the people that we know instead of foreigners. Also, there is strength in numbers so we have an advantage there as well. Naruto's voice was purposefully quiet so that only his teammates could hear him, yet that quiet tone sounded more authoritative than anything else. Sasuke took a minute to look Naruto up and down, his eyes screwed up in concentration. But, he just nodded and turned, as if to give his approval to what Naruto had just said. Once Sasuke had done that, Sakura immediately followed suit. The boy grinned slightly and patted himself on the back. Now, all they had to do was get the other Kanoha teams to agree, and an alliance would be formed. And really, they just had to convince Kiba's team, or just Kiba because of how hot-headed he was, and Niji's team. Even if Lee was on that team, Niji was the clearly defined leader who had a very high ego and a strong sense of pride. He wouldn't take anyone's help if it was the last thing he did. Or at least, that's who Niji was before. He kept pace behind the other two, noting how Sakura's gait was slightly jumpy, and how Sasuke had more rigidity to his walk than was normally there. Naruto resisted scoffing. If this was war, and in a way it was, and those two had been walking like that, the enemy would have immediately taken them out because their walks were tells, tells that they were nervous. Of course, they had every right to be. They were only twelve and had no idea what to expect. But Naruto did and perhaps he was being slightly unfair towards them. Sakura looked around nervously, her hands sweating. Um guys? Her two teammates looked at her quizzically. Where are we? Indeed, they had been walking for some time now, and all they could see no matter which direction they turned to was miles upon miles of jungle. We're in the southwest section. A voice behind them piped in. Sakura and Sasuke immediately turned around, Kanai's in hand, but Naruto stopped them before they took someone's eye out, having sensed the person's chakra earlier. Relax guys. It's only Shikamaru and his team. Team 10 stood in front of Team 7, with Shikamaru and Naruto exchanging secret nods. Inno pig. Sakura yelped. What are you doing here? The blonde girl smirked with malice. Naruto shivered slightly. Ino was as bad as Sakura when it came to their so-called rivalry. Well, she drawled out slowly, this is my team? So why shouldn't I be here? Then she sighed ever so slightly. But since you asked so nicely, Shikamaru said it would be best if we found you, so we tracked you guys down. You know. Sasuke spoke for the first time, his brooding eyes flitting between Naruto and Shikamaru. Naruto said something very close to what Shikamaru said. So? Shikamaru interjected. He shot a cheeky grin at his friend before saying, I guess great minds think alike. That had the Uchiha scoffing within seconds. As if. He muttered before stalking away which made the girls of the teams try to keep pace beside him. This left only Chuji, Naruto, and Shikamaru who were meandering away at a reasonable rate. How have you been, Naruto? Chuji asked, munching away on some of the crisps he had. The boy slash man smiled. Chuji had always been so gentle up until Asuma had died. Then he had truly emerged as a warrior. All Akimikis were nice folk, but if you pushed their buttons correctly, they were a force to be dealt with. I'm fine Cho, how about you? Asuma-sensei treating you enough times? The chubby ninja smiled, rubbing his belly at the same time. Of course. Mom said that I gained some muscle mass the other day, so if I keep going like this, I'll be built in no time. Shikamaru grinned fondly at his childhood best friend. Not many understood that the Akimichi clan converted the protein that they ate into pure muscle. That food was like steroids to them, but they needed it to perform the clan techniques. So while many were teased for being big-boned it actually was true. The bones in their body expanded especially when they used the jutsu that made them grow bigger, like giants. The three of them walked behind their team in amiable silence, Naruto and Shikamaru both searching for signs of Orochimaru or Kabuto. Do you know where Lee is? Shikamaru asked Naruto in an undertone. No. Do you remember how we met up last time? The Nara scratched his head. Didn't it have something to do with Sasuke getting bitten, and we were taking turns watching him when Lee showed up with his team? 
Let's make sure something like that doesn't happen again. Shikamaru added the last part darkly. Naruto nodded in concurrence. But, he said with a low chuckle, all this green foliage means that Lee has the perfect camouflage. Both the time travelers shared a quiet laugh before Chuji looked at them strangely, forcing them to cease conversation. You two seem closer than usual. Chuji remarked casually as he watched his two friends interact. Naruto scratched the back of his head sheepishly before glancing at Shikamaru who nodded ever so slightly. Well, haha, you know what they say. Birds of a feather flock together, right? We're both dead lasts, isn't it obvious that we would stick together? Shikamaru deadpanned, causing both Chuji and Naruto to share a good laugh which in turn caused the other three to glare at them. You two are so dash, whatever Chuji was about to say was abruptly cut off by the whizzing swoosh of a kunai that was no doubt intended for them. Immediately, the six genin were on guard, kunais out, positioned in attack and defense stances. Shikamaru glanced at Naruto who shook his head ever so slightly and mouthed three. The Nara let out a small sigh of relief. Orochimaru was not part of this guerrilla attack. It was probably some random Kusa or Mizu team. He put his hand in the traditional rat seal, intending to bind his attackers, but it seems Sasuke had other plans as a cry of Katan, Gukaki no Jutsu was heard from behind him, followed by a giant ball of fire which forced him and Naruto to jump out of the way in order to avoid being burned. The three enemy ninja, who turned out to be from Mizu, deflected the fire with a simple water technique. Like most teams, there was two boys and a girl. Is that the best that this mighty village has to offer? The girl taunted, her plain brown hair glinting in the harsh sunlight. And you! She turned her attention to Sasuke which caused Ino and Sakura to bristle visibly. Doesn't the oh-so-powerful last loyal Achihad know that water douses fire? You're all outclassed here. Hurry up and give us your scroll, or else. Naruto tensed, risking a peek back at said Uchiha. The girl had no idea what she was talking about, or who she was talking to. Sasuke didn't like being reminded that he was inferior to anyone, especially a foreigner. Naruto had no wish to see this girl killed by Sasuke's sheer rage. It seemed that Shikamaru didn't either because seconds after the girl had said those words, she was trapped in the Nara shadow technique. Has anyone ever told you that you talk too much? He asked lazily, not really willing to exert himself. You're outnumbered two to one. It's you who should give up, or else. The Mizunin's face, which was already furious, grew even more angry. Her teammates, seeing the predicament she was in, launched into action. Sui Tun, Bakusui Showa, asterisk one of the genin shouted, water spewing from his mouth. The six genin were forced to move out of the way as the genin who performed the jutsu rode the giant wave he had created. The smirk on his face was not one that either Naruto nor Shikamaru were particularly fond of. The shadow that the latter had cast was forcibly removed, and the girl was up and moving again. Get ready! Surprisingly, it was Eno who called that out as they all saw the second male genin run through a series of hand seals. Suetan, Daibukuryu, asterisk, immediately, a giant whirlpool was created, intending to drown the six of them. From a tree branch above, Naruto narrowed his eyes, noticing how the wave creating genin's wave was diminishing in size. It made sense. The size of the wave was dependent on the chakra levels of the user. Since the technique he had used was at least B-rank, and he was only a genin with average-sized coils, he was quickly running out. And the other boy. Two water users in a village with mostly fire affinities. How foolish. The jutsus would only neutralize each other. A quick glance at Sasuke showed that the Uchiha was soaked, something Naruto would have laughed at, but he knew that Sasuke wouldn't, or rather, couldn't, perform a fire-style jutsu because of his very inflated ego. No other genin, not even Naruto in the previous timeline, had elemental techniques in their repertoire until after Sasuke had left. Naruto. Shikamaru hissed from another tree. The water level in the forest was currently rising, and Shikamaru would not be bested by mere genin when he himself was a very elite jonin, and advisor to the future Hokage slash his best friend. The blonde sighed. He was going to have to reveal yet another skill. But if it was to help his friends, then so be it. 
Running through hand seals at a blinding rate, Naruto cried out, Dotun, Doriahiki, asterisk. Water was weak against earth, so when a giant wall of solid mud crashed against the water, the water was absorbed by the earth element which caused it to swell. The Mizu Genin were thrown for a loop when they skidded in the damp and muddy ground. But Naruto wasn't done yet. He had to solidify the mud if he wanted to successfully trap them. He jumped down into the mud and placed both hands deep inside of it. Dotan, Doromayu, asterisk. The effect was nearly instantaneous. The ground in front of him rippled like water and hardened with each ripple. Though the Mizunin tried to run, it was futile. The mud reached their necks, binding their hands, and only leaving their heads visible. In truth, Naruto had gotten the idea for this jutsu by watching and trying to copy Gara's sand burial, though it was not as bloody as Gara's. The only element it could work with was earth, and that was a very weak element for Naruto because of his affinity to wind, as well as Kurama's for fire. The enemy Nina struggled viciously against the blanket of earth they were in, but it was to no avail. The six Kanoha Genin landed on the now solid ground, most of them looking at Naruto with something akin to respect. Of course, Sasuke was fuming on the inside at the so-called Dobe's never-before-seen abilities, while Shikamaru, who knew Naruto's true capability, couldn't care less about the low-level ninjutsu that any trained genin could do. Nice one, Naruto. Shoji gave the blonde boy a thumbs up and a white smile. Behind him, the two girls also shakily gave Naruto grateful nods before all of them turned to the Mizunin who seemed to have given up based on the morose expressions on their faces. Shikamaru though, didn't care about them. What he cared about was the pack that one of them had dropped that carried an earth scroll. Strolling over oh so casually, he picked it up and handed it to his Hokage. Hey! Ino cried, her hands up in indignation. Why'd you give the scroll to Naruto? Cause he did the work. Shikamaru deadpanned. Plus, now that we've helped him, he's gonna repay the favor. Naruto just nodded and gave the scroll to Sakura. Whether he liked it or not, she was the most responsible and the one who would keep the scroll safe. Indeed, she simply accepted the scroll and sealed it without blinking. If we're done here. Sasuke scowled at the Mizunin. Let's go. Shikamaru stated tiredly. Naruto gave a sinister grin to the trapped shinobi along with a wave. Those Nin could only watch as their only hope of escape jumped from branch to branch, disappearing into the foliage. Unknown to the genin, their senseis were watching as well via small cameras installed throughout the forest. That was unexpected. Asuma remarked. He hadn't expected his lazy genius to turn the scroll over to Naruto, no matter how close they were. But Asuma had learned that whatever Shikamaru did, he did with great thought behind each action. Kakashi leaned back in his chair, his one visible eye narrowed. Naruto hadn't shown that he could do elemental jutsus. In fact, the only ninjutsu Naruto used was the Kage Bunshin. This kid, Kami. And Shikamaru, that kid was something else as well. It was very unshinobi like to simply hand over something that was akin to salvation, but once again, it showed the type of trust that those two, plus the Lee kid had. None of that trust came from simply training, it came from a bond, a bond between brothers. The bond that Kakashi and Abido should have had. The copy ninja made himself comfortable, because he knew this was going to be quite an eventful test. Lee was having the time of his life in the forest. Mostly because he was sort of bonding with Niji, but also because it gave him an excuse to use some of the unending youth aka expendable energy that was making him jumpy all the time. The spandex-clad boy-slash-man was literally bouncing off the trees, doing somersaults and flips whenever he could. Tintin, being the understanding girl that she was, simply thought that Lee was overexcited for this exam. While she was partially right, Lee was understandably jumpy as well for he had seen Orochimaru and knew that the ex senin would attack sometime in the next day or so. He wondered where his two friends were, if they were together, and most importantly, if they were safe. Lee didn't actually come into contact with them in the previous timeline until Sasuke had been bitten, and they were all forced to protect him. Lee Kuen. Tintin called, slapping her forehead in exasperation. She had been watching her teammate for some time now, 
and it seemed he was so lost in his own flames of youth that he didn't realize he was almost about to crash into a very big oak tree which was home to some very ferocious-looking squirrels. The sheepish look that she gained in return was proof that Lee had heard her and acknowledged what she said. Niji, though incredibly stoic, even for Hugo that he was, couldn't help but smirk at the display. His teammate was eccentric to the point of downright annoying, but he was incredibly talented as well. And if it was one thing that Niji respected, it was strength. Tin Tin, Lee. Niji's voice stopped both in their tracks. The long-haired Jennings Byakugan was activated, and he was currently staring out into the vast foliage. What do you see, Niji Kuen? Tin Tin already had her weapon scroll out. Lee had a small smirk that could have rivaled Niji's as he entered into his Taijutsu stance. That was the difference between Sakura and Ino and Tin Tin. Tin Tin had found her motivation from the start. Her father owned a weapons shop, and she was enthralled with shinobi life since she was a toddler. Her dream was to become like Tsunade Sama, and that dream was her ideal. Sakura and Ino, their motivation was not like that. Sakura's parents pushed her into this life, and when she discovered her Sasuke Kuen, that became her motivation, to be good enough so that Sasuke would notice her and make her the next Mrs. Uchiha. It wasn't until after Naruto came back with a freaking hole in his chest did she start seeing the light. And that promise, no. That burden she had put on his friend, the one to bring Sasuke back, it haunted her until the day she had died by the hands of the very man she had adored. Three Neen, heading southeast towards us. Chakra levels look to be a little less than mine, so on par with you, Tin Tin. Everyone be on guard. Niji grunted softly. The two others simply nodded and waited for the enemy Jinin to come. And when Lee saw the music notes on their headbands, he groaned. It looked as though time travel had changed things ever so slightly. The girl, Tsuchi Ken, if he wasn't mistaken, had fought Shikamaru in the preliminaries, and one of the boys, Abumi Zaku, had fought Shino. Both of them had fallen to Orochimaru's Edo Tensei when he used them for human sacrifices. The bandaged one, Kinyuta Dosu, was someone whom Gara had killed. Lee recognized the description that the future Kazakage had given of the sound Nin who had foolishly challenged the then Jinchuriki in order to make sure that Sasuke's opponents in the finals would not get in the way for Dosu to kill him himself. However, now was not the time to dwell on the past. This was Lee's new timeline, and he wasn't going to let past demons get the better of him or his team. With a hard gleam in his eyes, Lee beckoned to his opponents mockingly. Bring it. We're lost, aren't we? Shikamaru side is past a tree that he swore he had seen three minutes ago. Even though he and Naruto were there, the forest was a complete mess. Only Anko and probably Ibiki could navigate this place without markers that were usually there, but had been taken out for this event. No. Naruto replied curtly. Little Sasuke-chan is simply letting us walk in circles to enhance our dismal observational skills. Shikamaru had to conceal a snort at the sarcasm. Indeed, the Uchiha had decided to assume command and march forward, knowing full well that he had no idea where the hell he was going. Something's gonna happen. The blonde commented as if it were the most natural thing in the world to do. Yep. And it's all Sasuke's fault. Uh-huh. So, theoretically speaking, say a certain person who has the opposite of ophidiophobia decided to show up, and again, theoretically speaking, this person decided to attack a certain Avenger, then, once again, I remind you that I'm speaking hypothetically here, and this Avenger was, say, taken out of commission by the person who has the opposite of Ophidio Dash. Naruto was cut off by a thwack on the head. Thankfully, since they were at the tail of the group, no one saw anything except for Chuji who was close enough to hear Naruto's quiet moan of pain. Shikamaru pinched his temples. I swear, Ruto, you will be the death of me. He shot his friend a withering glare. And if I didn't know that Ophidiophobia was the fear of snakes, then I would most definitely call you a mentally retarded baka. Naruto pouted slightly, but his eyes were sparkling with mirth. Don't worry, Shika. Orochimaru is trying to kill Sasuke at this point. 
he couldn't before because thankfully, I meddled. Instead, he chose to mark him and place a five-pronged seal upon me which made my ability to control chakra worse than it already is, was. He closed his eyes, remembering how Ebisu Sensei had been trying to teach him to walk on water, and his piss-poor control then. Lucky for you that your ability to control your bodily functions was also piss-poor. Shikamaru grinned, remembering how Kiba had been defeated by Naruto's fart. His future Hokage scowled. Don't remind me. I can't believe that I won. Has anyone told you that you have the oddest, most unbelievable luck? Naruto smiled a wistful and longing smile, fingering the place on his neck that still didn't have the Shodai's necklace. Yeah, all the time. But that smile turned into a scowl again when, encore and four asterisk, he and Shikamaru realized that they were going nowhere. All of a sudden, Naruto tensed which caused Shikamaru to stop and look back in concern. What is it? He whispered urgently. Lee. Naruto replied. He's in trouble. You sensed him? Shikamaru asked. Him, Niji, and Tintin. Tin. They're all close by. But. Naruto closed his eyes and tried to focus on them. What he felt were three, no, six chakra signatures very near to their location, just west of them actually. Six, they weren't with Team 8 so. I've got it. They have to be fighting. Just as Naruto said this, the clanging of kunai against kunai was heard from above the six of them. Not again. They heard Sakura mutter in exasperation. But she obediently pulled the kunai out and settled down in a defensive stance. Kanoa Senpu, asterisk all six dodged the falling of a massive tree before going to see what was happening. Lee! Naruto cried, narrowly swerving to avoid what looked like a mass wave of hinged kunai. His friend was just above him, kicking and punching away at the enemy name. Naruto Kuen. Oto. Lee managed to say whilst fighting off a rather disturbing looking genin with bandages covering his entire body. Naruto's eyes widened. Lee had said Odo. These were sound names. That meant Orochimaru was close by. Katan, Gukaki no Jetsu. Sasuke shouted from overhead. For once, Sasuke's favorite Jetsu came in handy. The fire created a diversion long enough for Lee to get a solid hit on Dosu which caused the bandaged Jinin to crash into the tree behind him which made several trees behind that fall as well. It took a couple seconds for the genin who didn't know Lee like Naruto and Shikamaru did to look at the oddly dressed shinobi and then back at the downed and now unconscious sound Nin, and then back to Lee who was rubbing the back of his head in a coy manner. Lee. Naruto's voice lowered to a more authoritative tone. Naruto Kuen. Lee bowed his head ever so slightly. Sound Nin. He said again. And there's still more of them. The girl said. Naruto narrowed his eyes. Tsuchi Ken, and the boy next to her was a Bumizaku. Both were pawns in Orochimaru's scheme. The girl's long raven hair flew back, the snake patterned scarf around neck reminding all three time travelers that these sound Ning were not just ordinary genin, they were at least at a chunin level. Shikamaru recognized them as well, judging by the tensing of his body. The girl was someone he had fought against, and someone he had defeated. How troublesome. Kage Shibari no Jetsu, asterisk Shikamaru put his hands in the rat seal, trapping Zaku in his shadow. If he remembered correctly, it was Ken who had no experimentation done on her. Zaku, on the other hand, used sound waves to destroy his enemies. He was a larger threat. Seeing how Zaku was trapped, Naruto launched into attack mode, creating hundreds of clones on the fly. He had only meant to create twenty or so. Damn, my chakra control is still pretty bad. He thought as he fell into a familiar taijutsu stance to team guy. Niji's eyes widened as he saw his blonde comrade copy Lee's stance. As far as he knew, only Lee and Guy were trained in this type of taijutsu. It seemed as though Lee knew this boy who was dressed in orange. What respectable ninja wore orange? Wasn't this the boy who had subtly berated both Ibiki-san and the woman Proctor? 
but by the way this boy was fighting, he was good, better than the so-called Uchiha prodigy. How odd. Naruto, she's using a weapon. Chuji cried out as he saw Ken pull out a Sunban. From what the Akimichi had learned about the tool, they were deadly because of their size. They were able to pinpoint each Tenketsu and close them so that the attacky was left without chakra and very vulnerable. Thanks, Cho. Naruto grunted, blocking another one of the girl's attack. Haku had used Senban, and while Naruto couldn't remember much about that fight, he did remember almost losing control after seeing Sasuke's, nearly dead, Senban-ridden body. Senbans were usually countered with fine lines of chakra that severed the trajectory. While he was able to do that when he was older, right now, his control was terrible. The only person here who could do that was Shikamaru or Niji. Shikamaru, Chakra Strings Naruto ordered, executing a roundhouse on the poor girl. The Nara, who still had Zaku in a bind, was also in a bit of a quandary. He probably couldn't control the shadows as well as he wanted to, otherwise, he could do both at once. His next best option was Niji. Huga-san. The Huga looked indifferent at being addressed by someone he didn't know at all. This must have been the missing member of Team 10 when all of their senseis had forced them to have dinner. Lee, the blonde boy, and this Nara were conspicuously missing, as was the Uchiha. What? Shikamaru grimaced at the cold tone in his future friend's voice. I have to get this guy, he gestured to Zaku who was struggling to escape, out of my grip, so that I can help Naruto out. Mind helping out a fellow Kanoha Shinobi? Plus, he has an earth scroll, so you could take that too. Shikamaru. Ino yelled. Why do you keep giving away scrolls? Not now, Ino. The Nara scowled. I'm trying to, what the hell? Shikamaru dropped to one knee, as did Zaku whose neck was rapidly spreading with Orochimaru's cursed seal. The Otonin was howling in pain, clutching his neck. Yet, because he could not move, the pain was nearly unbearable. Above them, King cursed as she saw the predicament her teammate was in. Orochimaru-sama must have activated the seal. It was a signal. A signal which meant that the Uchiha, which had been their main target, was no longer their concern. Orochimaru-sama would deal with the brat himself. In one fluid moment, Ken threw a sunban at Shikamaru which was aimed straight at his jugular. The Nara was forced to dodge it, releasing Zaku, and letting Ken take her teammate to safety. The nine Kanoha Jinin saw her escaping with Zaku tucked under one hand, and the newly recovered Dosu following quickly after her. Naruto and Lee landed near Shikamaru, knowing exactly why the three had fled. Narasen. Niji's voice caused Shikamaru to turn. Much to his shock, Niji was holding the earth scroll that the Otonin had discarded and extending his arm to give it to Shikamaru. What dash? We already have one. Tintin, the panda-haired girl waved cheerfully, found one left in the carnage of what looked like a bloody battle. There was sand everywhere. Lee added, emphasizing the last part. Gara. Thank you, Niji-san, right? Hinata's cousin? Shikamaru took the scroll, watching how the neutral expression on Niji's face turned into a scowl for a split second before returning back to its stoic state. That is correct. He made to leave, but a hand on his shoulder stopped him. Niji was going to shake it off, but he found himself looking into the most luminous blue eyes he had ever seen. Niji-san, Naruto began. My name is Uzumaki Naruto. And these are my teammates, Haruno Sakura and Uchiha Sasuke, but you have already met them. He ignored Sasuke's bristle at being addressed last. We, that is, Shikamaru's team and myself, are asking if you would like to join us. Lise, I think it's a good idea was left in the background when Niji raised an eyebrow and asked, and why would we do that? Think of it this way, Niji-san. There is strength in numbers. Now that we all have the proper scrolls, no one is tempted to steal the other's scroll. We are all on even footing, plus, we can ensure that Kanoha will be on top by traveling together. A good ninja is supposed to be alone, Uzumaki-san. A good ninja doesn't need others. Niji scoffed. He had heard about Uzumaki from his pathetic cousin. 
did last, no family, the Hokage's favorite, prank puller extraordinaire. All in all, a talentless nobody, and someone who his cousin adored. He really did understand the opposite sex. However, some of what he had seen from the boy didn't go with what his cousin had said about him. The boy was smart, and somewhat talented. Then tell me why, Hugo-san, this is not an individual test? Why does it require an entire team just to enter the Chunin exams? Our sensei once said that those who abandon others are worse than trash. Do you not agree? Naruto's voice had gotten very low, which his two best friends knew was a dangerous sign. If Niji had noticed the change from Niji-san to Hugo-san, he didn't mention it. Ma, ma. Tintin interjected, seeing that a fight might break out. I think that Lee Kuen and I want to stay with you so Niji Kuen is outvoted anyway. Nah, Niji Kuen? She wrapped an arm around his shoulder and shook him much to his ire. That had Lee chuckling slightly. Ah, the beginning to a couple who never got their happy ending. Perhaps I should play matchmaker. Seeing that he truly was outnumbered, Niji sighed and nodded curtly. Fine, but don't slow me down. Mendokus. The Nara grumbled, yelping when Naruto hit him over the head. What was that for? What did I tell you about that word? Oh, shut up. Laughing like a maniac, Naruto took off after Niji with Lee at his heels. Pretty soon, all nine of them were finally going in the right direction thanks to Niji's Byakugan. Throughout all of this, Sasuke clenched his fists and gritted his teeth at the display that Naruto and Shikamaru and that weird other genin had given. They had looked fluid in their movements. Naruto, he and Shikamaru were supposed to be deadlasts. Not leaders or fighters like he was. Shikamaru was right though. This all was very troublesome. Orochimaru-sama the three Otonin murmured in unison as they knelt before the snake Sinin who was currently disguised as a Kunoichi. Coo coo coo. Well? Hi. Ken stood up to give her report. The target, Uchiha Sasuke, appears to be strong for a genin. His ninjutsu is comprised of, from what we saw, fire techniques. Unfortunately, we were not able to account for his taijutsu or jinjutsu skill. Not a problem, Kinchan. And for once, he was telling the truth. He needed the Uchiha for his eyes, for the legendary Sharingan. It wouldn't be too bad, though, if the Uchiha joined him, at least for a while. He had gotten hold of some psych reports after Itachi had massacred the clan. It seemed the boy was out for revenge. And for revenge, power was a must. Orochimaru could give young Sasuke all the power that he needed for a price. So he would wait and see what would happen after the invasion. But first, giving Sasuke his mark seemed appropriate. When do you think Orochimaru will strike? Lee asked his friends in an undertone. Soon. Shikamaru replied tersely, on edge for another attack. He recalled his ninja, meaning that he wants an update on everything going on in the forest, mostly Sasuke. Maybe he's getting impatient, and maybe that means he'll attack sooner. That's the thing though, isn't it? Naruto said softly. We're running on maybes and not definitives. Maybe he'll attack tomorrow. Maybe he'll do it within the hour. Or maybe he won't attack at all. We'll never know until it happens. Such is the downside of time travel. Shikamaru inserted sagely. What are you three talking about back there? Eno grumbled, the frustration on her face showing. Nothing important you know. Just about how life is too troublesome, and how we would rather be looking at clouds than doing this. Naruto grinned at the Yamanaka, who huffed and rolled her eyes. You're like a hyper Shikamaru. You have no idea. Lee added softly so only the other two could hear. Except not as smart. Or well-rounded. Shikamaru had to have his two cents as well. Or calm. Or relaxed. More like lazy. Lee corrected the Nara who stuck his tongue out at him playfully. Or handsome. Shikamaru just had to add that one one. Will you guys stop? Naruto asked, irritated that they were ganging up on him. I am your Hokage after all. Ouch. 
Shikamaru gave his Hokage that one-fingered salute. After telling us that we're not allowed to play the Hokage card, you go and play it yourself. Hypocrite. Oh, shut up. Naruto pouted. And by the way, the ladies love my ocean blue eyes and luscious golden locks and my Adonis-like figure. So remind us why you've never had a girlfriend before? And that was the end of that conversation. Hokage-sama. An ANBU in a bird mask knelt before his leader. Torai Kuen. Report. The wizened man took a puff of his pipe before gesturing for his subordinate to begin. Hi. While patrolling training ground 44, the Sigma team discovered the bodies of three Odo Jinin, all of which were destroyed through the application of a tremendous force that crushed the bodies of the victims. Around each body, many traces of sand was found, which confirms that the killings were made by Sabaka no Gara, the carrier to the Ichibi. We also found the corpse of a deceased Odo Kunoichi, though her death was not caused by the sand Jinin. As of now, it is difficult to pinpoint the cause of death without a medical expert such as Tsunade-sama. It was no secret that Gara, the Kazakage's son, was the Jinchuriki of the Ichibi. Actually, it was only Kanoha who hid the existence of the Jinchuriki partially for his own safety, but also because one day Naruto would become Kanoha's ace in the hole. However, what the container of the Ichibi had done was truly disturbing. Saratobi ran a hand over his withered face. This boy, Gara, he is a viable threat to Kanoha. It wasn't a question, it was a statement. Hi, Hokage-sama. The ANBU replied. Is he a threat to Naruto? Saratobi truly did not know what happened when Jinchuriki met Jinchuriki. Did the tailed beasts recognize each other? Did they hate each other? Would they use their hosts to kill each other? All of these were unanswered questions. The ANBU hesitated before answering. We do not know. Since Uzumaki has only utilized the QB's power to save the life of Uchiha Sasuke, we are not sure of the extent to which the QB and Uzumaki connect on. Forgive me if I ask, but is this not the reason you have called Jiraiya-sama to Kanoha? Yes. That was all Saratobi was going to say on that matter. However, Naruto-san seems to be an able shinobi who is holding his own. From the footage that we've seen, he is a resourceful and clever ninja, one who convinced the Sumasan and Gaisan's teams to join him. Torai, or Tenzo, or Yamato, or whatever you wanted to call him had been surprised to see the normally exuberant and seemingly untalented Jinin sense him, and ANBU whose chakra was supposed to be nearly undetectable. He should have seen it coming after all those pranks he had pulled, dropping paint bombs over ANBU headquarters, he still had to kick Kakashi for giving the kid the location, and then running away from trained operatives in orange of all colors and not getting caught until much later. That warranted a tiny bit of respect, and a lot of ire. The Hokage steepled his fingers. Asuma and Guy's teams, huh? Of course. Shikamaru and Lee were on those teams as well. It was obvious that they would make an alliance. Still, though, he was interested to see the footage, not just to check Naruto's progress, but also to see how the other Kanoa Jinin were faring. For a moment, there was a pause in which the Hokage was contemplating to give his stack of never-ending paperwork to the overworked ANBU in front of him. But that would be a cruel punishment to an excellent shinobi. So tell me more about this Odo Jinin's corpse you found in the forest this afternoon. Cleaning was not one of the Nara Head's pastime, but since his wife insisted that he take some time to clean the entire house before going to see the preliminaries of the Chunin exams, he had no choice. If Yoshino wanted something done, then it would be done. No questions asked. However, if it was one room he was interested in cleaning, it was his son's. In his son's room, there slept two other people at least four times a week. Naruto and Lee. Now, the boys had insisted that they would clean their own rooms, and for the past three weeks or so, they had kept that promise. Yoshino and the other women had brought some of the younger boys to the room to show them that even though their Anikis were ninja now, they still had the time to keep their rooms immaculate. As Shikaku entered the room though, he noticed it was a mess. The stress of the upcoming Chunin exams must have gotten to them because it seemed as though they had not made an effort to lift even one finger in this room. 
He sighed as he sifted through dirty laundry and empty ramen cups. Naruto, HMPFH, you are your parents' son in more than one way. But the elder Nara was forced to stop his cleaning when he came across a scroll that held very familiar handwriting. Shikamaru had a scroll? The closer he examined it, the more puzzled he became. It was titled Kage Jetsus, too. And it were a list of seemingly ordinary Jetsus that his clan used such as Kage Shirbari or Kage Main or Kage Nui, but it was the notations to the side of each Jetsu that made him interested. For example, next to Kage Main no Jetsu, there was a small asterisk and a side note written in minuscule handwriting that said, Drop Jetsu once Lee comes into right peripheral vision. Let Lee go to stance number 4 gate 1. There were two more next to that last phrase. Don't use on Jin and level Shinobi. For a rank or higher, let Lee go to stance number 11 gate 4. Naruto joins wind, fire, or earth jetsu depending on enemy's element. For more than one opponent, use Kaginui and let Naruto use RS asterisk or or star. Then, I'll come in with lightning or water used in conjunction with shadow techniques. Work on stage 2 with Lee and stage 3 with Naruto. While he had no idea what RS or or meant or what stances 4 or 11 were, he could only imagine that this was part of a collaborative effort to bring down opponents. What troubled him was the bit about the gates. He knew that Guy was able to open them, but for Amir Jenin to know about them, much less to utilize such a dangerous power, why did Shikamaru even know that Lee could do that? Was this how they trained? Plus, Shikamaru was not even in a team with those two. Why was he planning these attacks with them? He read further into his son's notebook, knowing he wasn't supposed to, but marveling on how his son's mind worked. Though the Nara clan was known for its brains, his son was a true genius. Some of the stuff that he was saying took the original Kagejutsu scroll, which all clan members were required to memorize before they became Jinin, and expand upon it. Since he had included only Naruto and Lee, it meant that his son was serious about this friendship, this brotherhood between them. It was clear that Shikamaru was going to work only with them once all of them became Chunin. Who knew? Maybe one day they would all join ANBU together. Well, there goes the hope of rebuilding the Inoshikacho. The man thought morosely. At the same time, though, tradition wasn't always a good thing. Putting the dead last with the top male and female Kunoichi was actually detrimental and caused tremendous rifts. From the little that he had seen of Team 7, it was clear that Naruto was not actually dead last and that the top Kunoichi was only book smart rather than street smart. Shikaku turned around, now nearly done with cleaning when another little notebook caught his eye. Curious to see what other trinkets of knowledge his three favorite kids were hiding, he went over to Naruto's corner and saw what had his attention. It was a book titled Fujin Jetsu, Collab. Nin. Tai. Kage. That had to mean Shikamaru and Lee were in on this. And this had to be Naruto's book. The property of Uzumaki Naruto tag gave that away. H.M., so the kid was interested in seals, eh? It was in his blood after all. He knew that the Uzumaki clan, cousin to Senju and therefore Uchiha were seal masters. Of course, that meant that every Senju had learned this art to an extent, and Kushina and Minato were masters. However, Naruto was not privy to his lineage, at least, not that they knew of. For him to be interested in this difficult speciality was either fate, a coincidence, or the boy knew of his ancestry and wished to make his parents proud. He picked up the book, wondering what was in it. Shikaku did not see the small, barely visible seal on the spine that lit up the second he touched it. Arg! What the dash? The Nara held his hand which was covered in angry red welts. The book had a seal on it. Gingerly wrapping his aching and blistering hand with some gauze, he bent down to examine the book. Indeed, there was a small seal, infused with blood. It was a simple seal that all Jonin learned to repel intruders. But it was modified because of the blood. This meant that only those who Naruto trusted implicitly could read the book, and he had to give those people permission first. Shikaku could only think of two other people who had any knowledge of that book existing, or of Naruto's skill with Fujinjutsu. 
he rubbed his temples wearily with his non-injured hand. Hopefully, he didn't find a secret scroll of taijutsu that Li held because this was just too troublesome. On the other hand, though, he had a legitimate excuse to stop working. Not that Yoshino would let him. For the love of Dash. Just shut up. I don't know which one is worse. Double the fun, TCH. How are we still sane? For the past ten minutes, Sasuke and Niji were competing for the position of point, constantly butting heads, and annoying each other plus the rest of the team, minus Sakura and Ino. Between the five of them, that is, Naruto, Lee, Shikamaru, Tintin, and Chuji, each of them were amusing themselves by betting on who would back down first. Surprisingly, or not so surprisingly, everyone voted for Sasuke. Lee looked at the rapidly darkening sky with worry. Day one was nearly over, and they hadn't found Hinata's team yet. Perhaps it was because all of them were trackers, and maybe they had escaped quickly. However, the spandex-clad Neen didn't want anything to happen to his friends, even if they technically didn't know each other yet. Niji Kuen Lee called to gain the Hyuga's attention. He pointed up, watching as Niji got the message. Sasuke, however, had no intention of stopping. Night hadn't truly fallen yet. They could still travel a couple more miles. So when he found himself rendered immobile courtesy of a very lazy Nara who himself had every intention of stopping, he naturally wasn't pleased. Where the hell do you think you're going? Shikamaru asked the sullen Uchiha. When the group stops, then everyone in the group does as well. H.N. You can't talk to Sasuke Kuen like that. Sakura tried to stand up for her one true love, but found herself on the receiving end of a rather cold glare from Tintin. Tin. Listen up, Pinky. Sakura bristled at that name. We agreed that we would travel as a team, one big team. Now that team is comprised of all nine of us. So when one of us is dissenting, someone has to stop him or her. So to sum it up, we have every right to talk to your Sasuke Kuen like that. She turned to say Jenin. You got that, Uchiha? Suffice to say, Sasuke didn't really say anything, especially not after being berated by a Kunoichi who he had never met, who was also currently sharpening a kunai in a very precise and frankly, scary fashion. Go Tintin. Tin. Naruto smirked under his breath. After dealing with Niji for so long, Sasuke was a piece of cake for her. We'll sleep in shifts. Niji barked. My team will go first, Uzumaki's is next, and Nara's team is last. If we see or hear anything, we'll wake you. Understood? They all nodded, except for Sasuke of course, and each went to either sleep or guard. No one forgot to keep extra kunai within arm's reach. The sun rose at roughly five in the morning, taking the nine genin with it. The most unusual thing that had happened during the night was a wayward squirrel attacking the stash of food that Chuji had. What had followed after that was a blur, but Chuji was quite certain that was blood on his hand when he woke up. Day two had started off without a hitch, but the three time travelers were playing everything by ear for the moment. Orochimaru lurked right around the corner. At least they all had scrolls. It was a small consolation for what might be a painful battle ahead. Just how big is this forest? Eno grumbled, plucking a leaf out of her hair. Shut up. You don't see any of us complaining, do you? Sakura scoffed at her rival. While Eno did remain silent, the glares that the two girls exchanged spoke volumes. Women. Shikamaru muttered. At least you know who yours is. Naruto ran a hand over his face, not wanted to think about such troublesome things. It's quiet. Sasuke spoke suddenly, stopping on a branch. Everyone followed suit, agreeing with the boy for once. Too quiet. Naruto murmured. Not even a bird was chirping. Kage bunch in no jetsu. Fifteen clones popped out, each with different tools in their hands. Naruto didn't revel in his chakra control, though. Instead, he gave his clones a simple order. Scout the forest. Look for more areas like this. What the? Chuji stopped midway when he saw exactly what lay under the branches. Blood. On the ground, coating the trees, the leaves, nearly every solid surface. 
and next to the blood. Bodies. Three of them, all Odonin, throats cut, wrists slashed, and worst of all, they weren't even in rigor yet. Which meant the bodies must have been only a few hours old. I feel like puking. Eno held a hand over her mouth. She couldn't bear to look at the carnage below. Lee's eyes narrowed in anger. Orochimaru. He hissed. This is what he does to those he has no use for. Yeah, except Kabuto did the dirty work. Shikamaru spit out. What could have done this? Tintin asked, a touch of anxiousness and fear clouding her voice. No one spoke for a moment, as they were all examining the remains of what appeared to be an assassination of some sort. It's not what, Tintin said. Naruto spoke up, his voice echoing through the forest. All eyes turned to him. It's whom? One person did this, and you are right in saying that person is certainly not a regular human, therefore he or she can be referred to as a what? You can't mean Dash. Naruto cut her off with his hand. Yes, I do. He jumped down from his branch and landed next to one body, inwardly saying a prayer for the dead Jenin. Look at the striations of the entry wounds on each body. They're all identical, and they came from the same type of tool. He knew where they came from. This was Kabuto's handiwork. Naruto's right. Shikamaru jumped to Naruto's right. This type of precision is different than a regular shinobi's work. It's medical precision. Niji surmised. From a scalpel, no doubt. Naruto confirmed. His clones were all popping away one by one. There are no other areas like this. Even Gara hadn't left a blood trail after the one pile of bodies that Lee's team had found. They heard retching coming from Sakura. That's... Chuji couldn't complete his sentence. Barbaric? Disgusting? Inhumane? Naruto said with a bitter chuckle. I'm sorry, my friend, but this is the life we signed up for. Let's go. Niji muttered. Though he kept a relatively calm face on, he too was severely disturbed. It wasn't surprising that no one disagreed with him. They are close by, aren't they? Orochimaru asked Kabuto who was in the process of cleaning off the last of the now drying blood on his medical tools. At the moment, the two were in a part of the forest that was close to the exit. The second that the Uchiha's team came close, they would spring a trap that would allow the snakes and Nin to capture his prey. Actually, they still have a good twenty miles or so to cover. Plus, with all the traps that the examiners have set up, I would give them till midday or at most, early evening for them to arrive. The sallow-skinned man frowned, but let it go. He wanted his entertainment to start sooner. Very well then. Kabuto Kuen, I think it's best if you get back to your team. I'm sure they're wondering where you've gone. He paused for a moment before adding, oh, and cut the camera wires. I don't think Kanoha needs to see this. The bespectacled spy scoffed at the thought of those pathetic weaklings. His master was right though, he should be getting back. After all, he had told them that he had only wanted to take a leak. Plus, cutting those wires would take up some extra time. As Orochimaru watched his right-hand man leave, the feeling of anticipation was building within his body. Soon, soon I will have those eyes, coo coo coo. Someone's cut the wires. Dinma shouted, coming into the room. What? Karina gasped. She couldn't lose contact with her kids. Can we repair them? The sunban chewing Jonin frowned and shook his head. The main line is cut too. The fastest we can get anything done is in two days. All the sensei sat forward with trepidation. They stared at the now static filled screens in fear. Fear for their children. These exams were certainly different than they had all expected. Naruto was getting fidgety. Every so often, he would finger his kunai holster, just itching for a fight. It wasn't that he wanted Orochimaru to come, no that wasn't it. It was just that if the horrid man did arrive, it would mean that the past they had come to change would be just a bit more predictable. Plus, Orochimaru couldn't pass up on the offer of the last Uchiha. Naruto Lee sighed in exasperation. 
His leader's agitation was getting to him as well. Naruto shot him an apologetic look inside himself, trying to focus on the calming effect of flying through the forest, trying to let the gentle wind lull him into a false sense of comfort. It didn't work, of course. If anything, the sense that hit Naruto's sensitive nose felt like individual shockwaves that blurred his concentration. He smelled everything. From flowers. To soil. To tree sap. To feces. To squirrels. To Chuji's crisps. To snakes. To hang on. Snakes. He stopped on the branch abruptly, eyes widening as he turned in the direction that the smell of snakes was coming from. Guys. Watch Dash. It was too late though, because the blast of wind that hit all nine of them was strong enough to knock them to the forest floor. Kuso. Shikamaru cursed, staggering to an upright position. He looked over to Naruto who was signaling to him and Lee with ANBU hand signs saying, This happened last time. Be alert. The Nara nodded and went over to Lee who was already up and ready to go. What's going on? Sakura all but cried, her voice reaching dangerously high levels. What do you think is going on? Lee thought to himself in a way that was highly uncharacteristic of him, at least in this timeline. Niji-san. Naruto's voice sounded like a command to the young Hyuga who immediately stood up straighter and activated his bloodline. He faltered, though, when he saw no human presence for a good 100 yards or so. I, I can't dash. Look above you. Naruto cut across him with impatience. Though annoyed himself, the Hyuga did as he was told. There. He sensed something, though it was just inside his range. Whatever that is, it's approaching rapidly. Niji warned. Brace yourselves. No. Shikamaru stated as calmly as he could. We have to retreat. If this thing could make a wind jutsu from that far, then we don't want to be anywhere near it. Hn, I'm not going to run away like a coward. Sasuke crossed his arms, looking remarkably like a petulant little boy. Listen to Shikamaru, Sasuke-san. We are mere genin. Whoever did that jutsu is not. This is not an act of cowardice, it is merely for survival. Lee added. We'll take care of him. The scowl on Sasuke's face deepened, and a retort was on the tip of his tongue when Niji's cry of watch out rang through the silent forest. From seemingly nowhere, hundreds of snakes poured down, trying to latch onto the nine genin. Ino and Sakura screamed, trying to escape the snakes. Tintin, on the other hand, had pulled out dozens of weapons and started slashing away at the snakes. Tintin-san. Naruto grunted, cutting his own snakes open only to see them pop away in a puff of white smoke. Their summons. What does that mean? The girl huffed out, executing a complicated flip. It means that you can't fight them like that. Once one summon is gone, another takes its place. It's a never-ending cycle. So how do you stop them? Niji asked. He was close enough to hear what his teammate and the blonde boy were talking about. Naruto paused for a moment to create about 100 or so shadow clones before answering. You have to fight summons with summons. That's the only way. While this was a complete lie, it might make the others realize that they were outclassed. He saw Niji and Tintin contemplating upon what he had said, and hoped to whatever god there was that they took his word. But how can we escape, Naruto? Chuji joined in on the conversation as well, slamming a snake onto the tree and watching it poof away. The grin that Naruto gave him reminded the rotund boy of when Naruto used to pull all those pranks. It was a foxy grin that never failed to make Chuji smile as well, even if this was a potentially life-threatening situation. Just leave it me, old friend. Naruto softly muttered. In a louder, more authoritative voice, he yelled, Stay back, everyone. It was time to make use of his poor chakra control. Kage Bunshin no Jetsu. The other genin watched in awe and slight jealousy, Sasuke, as not hundreds, but thousands of Naruto copies popped up, each with a kunai with hand. The real Naruto didn't look the slightest bit tired. Whoa. Tintin whistled. 
That kid must have a tremendous amount of chakra for him to create that amount of clones. Shikamaru scratched the back of his head lazily and let out a yawn. Eh? This is nothing for him. It's how he normally is. Naruto is odd. I second that motion. Sakura muttered, wondering when her teammate had gotten so powerful. One glance at Sasuke told her that she wasn't the only one who was surprised at the changes in Naruto. However, what she took as surprise was actually deep-seated resentment coming from the Uchiha. Meanwhile, Naruto was having perhaps a bit too much fun stabbing all the summons that the Hebe team had garnered. However, like he predicted, more and more were popping up. The snakes were also getting bigger and bigger, which meant that they were becoming more and more venomous as well. Naruto knew from the war that one bite from one of Orochimaru's snakes meant instantaneous death. Need a hand? Shikamaru's voice floated towards him from his right. Not really. Naruto took sadistic pleasure in tying two small snakes together and flinging them into a larger one causing all three to poof away. Orochimaru's going to be here soon. He's not going to like us playing with his pets. Lee added from the left. We have to get the others to safety. Naruto murmured, carefully watching as Sasuke beat another snake down while scowling at one of Naruto's clones. Uchiha! Get out of the way! Niji cried suddenly. Seconds later, a kunai, no doubt laced with poison, came hurtling out of the an area unseen right toward Sasuke. Sasuke's eyes widened. There was no way he could get away at this rate unless a flash of green stopped his negative thinking. In the next instant, the Uchiha found himself being carried bridle side by the eccentric genin in green spandex. Are you all right, Sasuke-san? The boy asked seriously, looking left and right to assess more possible flying kunai. He scowled, inwardly marveling at the other boy's speed before hopping out of his arms. It was already shameful that he had to be saved by this kid, but to be carried by him too, how embarrassing. Fine. Sasuke ground out. Now, Lee wasn't expecting a full thank you from the Uchiha, but a grateful look or nod would have been nice. After all, he had just saved the kid from Orochimaru's clutches, hopefully. Let's go. Sakura yelled, noticing how Naruto's clones were being dispelled at a fast rate and how the snakes were about double the size of an adult. One of the snakes caught hold of Shikamaru's legs and bit down, hard. The Nara let out a strangled cry of pain before stabbing the creature with a kunai. Luckily, it was a smaller snake and not as venomous. Cries of Shikamaru filled the air as Naruto, Lee, and a couple others leaped to his aid. I'm fine. He grunted, trying to stand, but found that his leg was going numb rapidly. Shit. Naruto shook his head, trying to assess the situation. A couple moments later, his eyes sharpened and he looked each genin over. Listen here and listen now. Unknowingly, each shinobi present straightened his or her posture. Lee and I will look after Shikamaru. You guys go and divide yourselves in two groups of three. Sakura, give us a scroll. Go to the checkpoint, tell the senseis about what has happened, and they will help us. As long as you are all Kanoha Shinobi, and in groups of three, the senseis have no choice but to clear you. The poison in Shikamaru's leg will slow this group down, and we will all be susceptible to whatever is out there. Now is not the time to argue. Just go. As the last word was shouted, a barrage of kunai, no doubt from the shuriken kage bunshin technique, hailed down on them, making Naruto's point even more prevalent. Go. He said again. We'll catch up. Naruto crossed his hand over his heart. I promise. Though Niji and Sasuke truly wanted to argue, the look in Naruto's eyes made them stop. Sakura slowly threw both the heaven and earth scroll over to Lee who caught them with one hand. Go! Shikamaru said firmly, standing up slowly. His leg was bleeding slightly, and the venom was coursing through his veins. She could dash. Just go! The Nara cut Chuji off harshly. Please. He added in a softer voice. We'll be fine. After several uncertain glances thrown their way, the remaining six Kanoha Jinin leaped toward safety. 
Neither of the time travelers could breathe a sigh of relief, though, because not two minutes after the others had gone, they heard a voice, a voice they had been preparing to hear for some time now. Coo coo coo. Orochimaru's hiss resonated through the forest. What do we have here? Are they going to be okay? Sakura asked Ino worriedly. She hadn't wanted to leave her teammates and fellow Jenin, but something in Naruto's voice just made her want to trust him. I, I don't know. Ino replied, her voice shaky. Shikamaru, I. She faltered, blinking back tears. He was one of her oldest friends. If anything happened to the three of them, she didn't even want to think about it. I trust Naruto. Chuji said firmly. If he says that it's gonna be all right, then I believe him. Yes. Sakura didn't know why she believed in her odd teammate's words, but there was a certain aura around him that the Hokage had as well. It was that of a leader. The exit is up ahead. Niji's voice was tense. The three genin that they had left behind, or rather the genin they were forced to leave behind on his mind. The six of them landed quietly taking a moment to look back, wondering if the other three were following them. No such luck. Let's go. Sasuke murmured, a bit less arrogantly than usual. As they went into what they believed to be a safe haven, they didn't notice the cold gray eyes of a particular bespectacled genin watching them from the shadows. So the Uchiha didn't stay to greet Orochimaru-sama, eh? This is going to be interesting. Only a glint of silver could be seen as Yakushi Kabuto stepped out into the fresh air and followed his comrades into the next round. Orochimaru Naruto said calmly, his diction and heart rate steady. Next to him, Lee hovered ahead of Shikamaru, protecting him. The Sanin stepped forward from a tree across from them, dressed in an Odo Kunoichi skin. His snake-like eyes narrowed with amusement. What's this? The QB container? Just my luck. Orochimaru was slightly disappointed that the other two genin held no surprise on their faces at this S-ranked secret. How odd. So you know who I am? It's nice to know that I have a fan. Naruto smirked ever so slightly. The same can be said of you, Naruto Kuen. It was Orochimaru's turn to smirk as he watched the QB kid assume an offensive stance. Maybe he should have taken the brat when he had the chance. Now, now, Naruto Kuen. There's no need to fight here. I can see that your friend is hurt slightly. By the way, I didn't appreciate you injuring my precious snakes. Naruto scoffed at the sickly sweet tone that the Sanin had. Don't be stupid, Hibi-san. Toads are much better than snakes. Orochimaru made an indistinguishable noise at the back of his throat. The brat was sounding too much like his idiot teammate. He watched as the kid pulled what looked like seals out of his pouch and placed them carefully on the other two and then himself. H.M. So he knew sealing, eh? It seemed as though the Uzumaki legacy continued in this new generation. What Naruto had put on all three of them was a chakra restoration seal. For Lee and himself, it would boost their levels. For Shikamaru, it would help in the healing process. While Naruto and Shikamaru both knew rudimentary healing, their control was so bad that they couldn't even perform the most basic of the medical jutsus. Thanks, bro. Shikamaru closed his eyes and allowed the warmth of his own power course through his veins, centering around his injuring leg, slowly soothing and healing it. Anytime. Naruto grimaced when he felt his stomach heat up. Yep, his companion was close to waking up, and he was not happy. Karama. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but calm down. Orochimaru is nothing but a fly so calm down. The fox somehow must have gotten the message because the warmth suddenly vanished, leaving Naruto oddly cold. You three have potential. Orochimaru mused out loud. Such strength, such power. Together, we could do great things. I could give you anything. So this is how Sasuke was lured to his side. Lee thought with disgust. Never would I join the likes you. He snorted in derision. I would rather die first. Orochimaru's eyes narrowed. Die, eh? Well, that's something I could arrange. 
After all, who will care if three nobodies like yourselves were to perish tragically in the forest, especially you, Naruto Kuen? He's coming. Shikamaru muttered, now able to stand on his own. We know. The other two replied in unison. From Lee's left came two snakes the size of small cottage. These snakes could kill in an instant. Kanoa Senpu. He cried out, kicking one in the gut while Shikama recovered his back by trapping the other one in its own shadow. Move! Naruto commanded, running through hand seals as fast as he could. Dotan, Tsuchi Maiso, asterisk from below, the ground spiraled up, swallowing the snakes whole. Elemental Jutsu won't work on me. Orochimaru taunted, darting in and out of the branches. The man was fast, that much Naruto could acquiesce. But he was the son of the yellow flesh. Shika. Hi. Raitan, Inazuma Rikiba, asterisk, lightning force field. The Nara's jutsu forced Orochimaru to stop in his tracks to avoid electrocution. Naruto. The blonde placed his hand on the nearest tree and began to charge it with his chakra. This particular move was one that he and Shikamaru had perfected during the last war. The force field caused the enemy to stop, and Naruto's attack left them with nowhere else to go but down. Swaytun, Genzai no go. Asterisk, torrential current, the water mingled with the lightning creating electric charges that neared one million joules. Orochimaru was virtual toast in a large toaster. Shikamaru infused his element, lightning, into his fist and got ready to attack. He jumped from branch to branch, thankful for Naruto's seal, getting ready to attack. The now slightly dazed Orochimaru was out of his comfort zone enough for Shikamaru to gain an entry. Jurin Combo, asterisk the ten-hit combo of uppercuts and kicks that was powered by lightning shocked Orochimaru with each blow. All three watched as Orochimaru crumpled onto a tree branch a good ten feet down. That was... Too easy. Lee finished. Too right you are, Jin and Kuen. Orochimaru's voice came from behind them. The body below transformed into an Odo Jinin, who was dead before Orochimaru had taken over his body. Before the three could react, one of his snakes had tried to bite Lee in the neck, but Naruto pulled him out of the way in time, not realizing that Orochimaru had something else in mind. Damn it! Shikamaru spit. He should have seen this coming. Kanoha Shofu, asterisk Lee cried from overhead, powering his leg with all that he could muster. It was too bad that he missed the Sanin, because seven trees below him collapsed to the ground. Naruto once again had to catch his friend from falling into the jaws of a massive snake below them. Said man observed the three in front of him with heightened interest. One, a Nara with tremendous potential. The other, a Taijutsu genius. And the last one. The son of the Yandame and Uzumaki Kushina, the blood of the Senju clan in his veins, and the Kyubi in his gut. That boy was a virtual gold mine. The three together, though, that was something that he shivered just thinking about. If he could have them, then he would be powerful beyond belief. You okay, Lee? Naruto asked his friend. Fine. Lee's eyes widened when he finally looked at Naruto. His skin whitened and untangled himself from the boy. Naruto. What? Is there something on my O? The blonde ninja saw why Lee had gone ashen. Apparently, there was a blade sticking out of his shoulder. Ruto. Shikamaru quickly jumped in front of his Hokage, while Lee did the same. Orochimaru steadied the two with amusement. These kids were like guards for the Uzumaki. They knew the boy's secret, and had no qualms with it. It seemed as though the boy was their leader. You two are lucky I didn't decide to mark any of you. Orochimaru drawled. It would too, what's the word I'm looking for, troublesome, any, Narakuen. Ku ku ku. Shikamaru tightened the hold he had on his kunai. By now, the elders must have been alerted of your presence. There's nowhere to go. One can always go up. Lee twirled in the air to throw a kunai at the new voice that had just joined. In that kunai's shadow were two more. Luckily, one of the weapons hit Kabuto straight in the knee. 
the traitor managed to aim a scalpel at Shikamaru, who had no choice but to take the blow in the arm because he was supporting Naruto who was losing blood quickly. Lee could only watch as Kabuto and Orochimaru escaped relatively unscathed while his two best friends were injured. Naruto winced at the pain he felt from Orochimaru's blade. It wasn't Kuzanagi, but it was something that he recognized. Raijin, the lost blade of the Naidame Hokage. Looks like the bastard gave us a parting present. He growled through gritted teeth. With no hand signals, he created a shadow clone and ordered it to pull out the blade. Arg! Damn it! Crap! Shit! Fu Dash Naruto's cursing was cut off by Shikamaru's hand, which Naruto noticed was bleeding. I'm fine. The Nara reassured his friend when Naruto looked like he was about to kill something. We all are. Gingerly, both Lee and Shikamaru helped their leader up, noticing that the QB was already starting to heal the wound. Old Furry's waking up. Naruto remarked, looking at his fresh, but healing wound. At least Orochimaru didn't get Sasuke, or Mark any of you's the five-pronged seal on me like last time. But unlike last time, you were more seriously injured than before. Lee said darkly, eyeing the blood on Shikamaru and Naruto. We're alive, guys. That's all that matters. Naruto murmured, grimacing at the pain in his shoulder. At least he still had three days to heal. Yeah, that's all that matters. Shikamaru concurred. Together, Lee and Shikamaru leaped towards the tower with Naruto, just thankful that it had been them with the injuries and not the others. Congratulations. You pa what the? Asuma, who had just popped out of the scrolls, was incredibly confused as to why Kakashi's pink-haired Jinin was with his team instead of Shikamaru. Asuma-sensei. Chuji had a panicked look in his eyes. Shikamaru, Naruto, and Lisan, they all, they. Shikamaru, Naruto, Lee? What could have happened? No. Please, no. Asuma's sense of panic at his students' frantic words heightened when Guy came running towards him saying, Lee and the other two, they're still in the forest. Your student was bitten by a snake, Asuma. A snake? You know what this means. Kyuso. Asuma cursed. There were only two people who used snakes, and one of them was currently trying to repair the down camera system. That only left. Orochimaru. Kakashi's low, anger-ridden voice filled the room. He closed his one visible eye, praying that those three were safe, that they hadn't done something stupid. Why is it always you three? Anko knocked the door down, revealing that her neck was rapidly spreading with the snake sinon's cursed seal. That confirmed the Orochimaru theory. How the hell did that bastard get into Kanoha in the first place? She yelled, wincing as the pain increased. All of a sudden, the tower lights activated, signaling that another team had arrived. The Jonans in the room tensed, waiting for the kids to put the scrolls together. However, before they could do that, a swirl of leaves entered the so-called secure room, revealing the three genin they had been worried about. Irika, who was supposed to appear for Team Seven's unscrolling, was attached to Lee and part of the Shushin as well. It was Kakashi who first saw the bloodied state of his youngest genin. Naruto was clutching his shoulder, blood pouring out of it while Lee and Shikamaru, who were sporting their own injuries, were trying to support him. No one asked who had executed the Shushin. Naruto. Uzumaki. Kid. Various other shouts were heard, calls for medics were made, and a general state of panic was in the room. For their part, the three genin for whom all the ruckus was being made for remained in a state of apathetic disconnect. When Kakashi placed a hand on his bleeding student, all Naruto did was huff and transfer the weight of the sword weight. The sword? Naruto. Kakashi began cautiously. Is that... Raijin? The jinin finished with a grimace. All talking ceased as everyone's eyes were on the three. That Hebe team has a terrible sense of humor. Shikamaru grumbled. Hebe team? Asuma questioned, eyes widening in horror. Orochimaru. Lee confirmed, his mouth twisted in a disgusted manner. Naruto saved me and got himself injured. Lee. Guy started, but Naruto cut him off. 
I'm fine, Guy Sensei. Really? This is nothing but a flesh wound. And as for the sword, he twirled it in his good hand. We got a piece of history back today. It was then that the Hokage himself burst through the doors and saw the state of his three most mysterious genin and the weapon that one of them was holding. Naruto. Hiruzen gaped at the boy. What in the world? Can I just say something? Naruto muttered knowing that all ears were on him. This is why toads are so much better than snakes. That is it for the video. Comment ramen if you got this far and I will see you guys in another video. Bye.